when I go winter camping, I can make some great food on my stovetop. However, now I've made an oven that allows me to bake delicious pizza, soft and warm cookies, ooey gooey cinnamon rolls, a savory bacon and egg loaf, walnut and banana bread, chocolate chocolate chip bread, and even an apple strudel on my little stove. I'm gonna show you how to make this little oven and bake some of that delicious food. When I go solo hot tent camping, I like to have something to fiddle with. I googled camping stove and it brought up this Coleman one that looks really nice for only $43, but it was too big for my little wood stove. I started thinking about how I could make my own. Now the basics of an oven is that you're cooking with hot air around your food and the bottom isn't getting hot like on a stove. Bread pans are about the same size as the top of my stove, so I stole two old ones for my wife and found a cheap, small cooling rack on Amazon. I cut the rack to size, leaving rods sticking out on each end. I measured about an inch and a half up from the bottom and drilled holes on four corners for the rods. With a little persuasion, the rods went in the holes. This rack provides space on the bottom to prevent direct heat on the pans placed in the oven. I then cut the pan's handles to allow a hinge I drilled holes for the hinge and bolted it on. I also cut the handle on where the front of the oven is on the bottom pan, which allowed me to have a lip on the top pan for opening the oven. Now for pans inside of the oven, I took two smaller bread pans and cut them down where one is a cookie sheet and the other is a shorter bread pan that fits inside of the oven. I started my baking with something easy. I bought a couple of frozen French bread pizzas that were just the right size. I added onions, peppers, more pepperoni, more cheese. I baked until the cheese was golden brown and it was delicious. Cooking time was a bit longer than the directions for a conventional oven. However, it baked nice, the crisp was crust, huh? and it was delicious. I packed in some pre-made chocolate chip cookie dough, and I spread that dough into one large cookie on my cookie sheet. The cookies rose over the lips of my pan and made a mess, but I cleaned things up for a tasty, warm, soft cookie. I bought a tube of cinnamon rolls with the cream cheese frosting. Baking time for these was shorter than expected. I frosted the rolls and enjoyed. The bottoms did get a little crispy, but with the cream cheese frosting, they were gooey and fabulous. Looking to up my game, I found some muffin mix that only required milk in the mix. I decided to give this one a test spin on my stovetop at home and the bottom got badly burned. I kept testing at home, went out and bought a large hose clamp that would provide more spacing for my oven from that direct heat. I also tried pouring about a cup of water in the bottom of the oven to reduce the heat and provide moisture during the first half of the baking, keeping the bread from burning on the bottom. 
Before my camping trip, I combined my muffin mix in a Ziploc bag with some powdered milk and some additional walnuts. When arriving at camp, I lit my stove. I mixed in one half cup of water and mixed it inside of that Ziploc bag. I oiled my pan and poured the batter in the pan. Using what I learned at home, but this time baking on my wood stove at camp, I put the water in the bottom of the oven However, the hose clamp caused the pan to not get hot enough. I removed the hose clamp, put my oven directly on top of my stove, and just made sure that I didn't get my stove up to too high of temperature. Now this made baking the bread take a really long time. Even though I oiled the pan, the bread came out in pieces. This is probably because I didn't wait enough for it to cool, but it looked and tasted good. brought it down to the other campers around the campfire and they seemed to really like it. The next day I used what I learned the previous day making banana bread to make chocolate chocolate chip bread with walnuts. I went through the same process of mixing the water in with the ingredients in the Ziploc bag pouring water into the bottom of the oven and baking. I had the same problem with it falling apart because I didn't wait for it to cool down enough, but that didn't dissuade the other campers when I brought it out for a taste test. <laughs> Chocolate, chocolate chip, nut, brownie bread? Sure. nuts in your mouth, Rob. I hate saying it. You're getting kind of good at this. It was good, but I think most of the people like the banana bread with walnuts in it better. Taking a break from sweets for breakfast. I lined a bread pan with bacon. Then I added some cheesy jalapeno tater tots. I added four eggs. Onions and green peppers. I placed it in my oven for 40 minutes. I then opened the oven and added some pepper jack cheese to the top. Closed the oven again and melted the cheese. I fork tested it and then brought it to the other campers and they seem to enjoy it. I gotta get the bacon to the bottom though. Come here, bacon! <laughs> Down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not too spicy. No, perfect. Not too spicy, not a little too little. I went through like pretty much all of the wood yeah, that I had. I went through almost all that whole bag perfect. I had. The only negative about this recipe is it was a little hard to serve because when you tried to scoop it out, the bacon kind of stuck to the pan and the potatoes and the egg and that sort of thing kind of fell apart. But everybody seemed to like it and it was a great spicy recipe for the start of the day. The first thing I thought when I saw these frozen treats at Aldi is those would fit perfectly inside of my camping oven. Now these strudel aren't pre-cooked, so I put them on my cooking sheet. I slipped them in the oven, let them bake for about a half an hour. The whole process was pretty simple. 
I pulled it out, I taste tested it myself, cut it into pieces and brought it down to the other campers to give it a try. And they seem to really like it. Good. This guy is the finicky eater of the world. Oh yeah, we got the apple strudel made by Jeremy Wait, Lacroix. You know, nice it's actually really appley. It's not too strudely. No, it's it's the perfect right of strudel and apple. A few things that I've learned while using my oven camping is the thermostat is not real accurate. You can see in here that it has a two inch probe sticking out that sometimes gets in the way. But the thermostat still does give me a good idea of if my oven is hot or if it's not. Now, when you're baking with this oven, you need to be really patient. It sometimes takes twice as long to bake things as it would in your regular oven. And if you just try to crank up the heat and cook things fast, the bottom is going to burn. Now using that water in the bottom of the pan is very helpful. You have to kind of figure out how much water to put in for different things. Like the eggs and the cookie, no water worked out best. Now if I'm making strudel, pizza, or some other things where the dough is made, I'd add a little bit of water. And if you're starting something from scratch like a bread, I would put significantly more water in the bottom of the pan. But the more water that you put in the bottom of the pan will mean that it will take a lot longer for your items to bake. You do need a glove or something to shield your fingers from the heat when you're grabbing the oven and trying to open it. And you need to slide it farther over to the right when it is opened so the lid balances on the stove and doesn't tip over. While this oven works well, if you have a larger wood stove, I would recommend that you just go ahead and buy that Coleman stove or something like it because of the fact that it is collapsible. Uh, it has that front door, which is a lot easier to open than flipping this one open. It has a nice thermostat and it has a rack that you can adjust and move around and it allows for larger pans to be put inside of that oven. I sewed this stuff sack for my oven. Now, the oven is not super big and it is easy to pack. And often what I do is I pack all my pans, utensils, I can even put some food in there when I'm preparing for my trip. Now, if you're not really familiar with hot tents and you want to learn more about hot tents and the stoves, next week I'm going to be putting out a video where I show you how to set up the tent and the stove and give you a complete review of those. If you want to see that video, I encourage you to hit subscribe, punch that bell notification. YouTube will tell you when that video comes out. Also, if you want to find more out about my channel, I encourage you to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for coming along on this trip. I hope that you have some good food while you're camping and that I will see you out on the trail.